Food insecurity remains a major challenge for many African countries due to reliance on unsustainable farming methodologies, limited mechanization efforts, limited skills capacity and ineffective farming innovative technologies. Precision agriculture has proven to be a game changer in the agrarian industry on the continent. Welcome to Doing Business in Rwanda. In this episode, we will highlight Rwanda's investments in precision farming as the country focuses on optimal use of acreage and crop yields enhanced by data and technological inputs. I'm your host, Tessie Carvin. Located in Nyagatari region of Eastern Province in Rwanda, the Gabiro Agribusiness Hub project is a first of its kind we work for agriculture ready to farm land with full and sustainable access to water and energy network. The government of Rwanda entered into a joint venture with the global precision irrigation leader Netafim for the execution of the project. Why was Rwanda a country of choice for Netafim? Under the leadership of His Excellency President Paul Kagame, Rwanda demonstrated a proven track record to be an early adopter of advanced uh, technologies. Being really a leader in governance, ease of doing business and having a continuously growing economy, Rwanda is the first choice for a partner in business and we are very happy to have partnered with the government. So in this landlocked country, GD, uh, the agricultural sector makes a one third out of the GDP. With the recent climatic changes, uh, Rwanda has been hit quite heavily by the global rise in uh, food prices, severe water conditions, and you know less and less water is really available when it's needed. Based on all of that, we really brought to the country a precision irrigation, which is going to help the farmers and the investors who are going to come here to this project to grow more with less. Netafim's main tagline is to grow more with less and this is uh, really at the essence of this project. The joint venture comes with unique offerings for investors. In terms of investment, as you asked me, Tezi, so the government decided to invest $50 million alone in the water infrastructure. Um, and this is really this is really the innovation in itself. So normally when a farmer is coming to, to land, he needs to invest uh, to get water, he needs to invest to get electricity, he needs to build his own roads. Here it's like a plug and play. So the farmer comes, he gets his lease, he pays his lease, he gets access to his land, and with the land access, he has access to water, electricity, and roads. So this makes this project unique, and we really hope that we will be able to duplicate this project you know, in different parts of this world. Sitting on 80 hectares, the Gabiro Agribusiness Hub Project Demo Farm has different components, including precision agriculture for horticulture, as well as a modern dairy farm. The Gabiro Agribusiness uh, Hub uh, Demo Farm, which has two components, uh, actually three components. It has a component for, for uh, precision agriculture for horticulture, a component for dairy farming, and then we have fields of uh, uh, roughly 75 hectares, but the whole demo farm is sitting on 80 hectares. So what we do here really is the names, and we have also a classroom whereby we teach farmers uh, on the new technologies that uh, are needed to modernize horticulture production, where we really introduce them to precision agriculture where we only uh, uh, irrigate not a whole field, but a, a plant that is in stress when it's still in, in a greenhouse. And then uh, once we, we, we move from the, the, the greenhouse, we go to the, to the nursery, and then we go to the field. In the field, we also have the, the drip irrigation, where we use, uh, scarce, we, we use water efficiently because of the scarcity of water resource. And uh, the beauty of also drip irrigation is we also uh, use water or we use fertilizers uh, that are water soluble. And so as we irrigate the plant, we also uh, put in the, 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 the required fertilizers and we are able to cultivate throughout the year without any problem. Yeah. 
it's feeding time for the 35 healthy looking Jersey dairy cows at the farm. In a controlled environment, the cows are provided with everything they need in one place and the results are high milk yields. We intentionally chose the, the, the Jersey cows uh, because we wanted to show the community that it's a very good breed which, is, uh, uh, which consumes less and produces relatively higher amount in, 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 a, in a nutshell when it comes to feeding it has a, a very good efficient use of, of feed resources. So for example, here uh, on a Jersey uh, cows farm the highest milking cow is giving us 32 liters per day. The lowest yielding gives us 15.7 liters per day. And on average, we have 22.7 liters per day. We demonstrate the technologies of feeding where we, we use the crops. The, we grow forage, the crop uh, byproducts, and even concentrate everything we fabricate here on, on the farm and we feed them ourselves and we actually use, use the milking machines where there is no human touch between milk coming from the other all the way to, 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 to the milk collection center. So everything is so automated. With limited access to water resources, especially in Rwanda's eastern province, Precision irrigation offers an efficient and effective way to deliver water directly to the plant roots, minimizing wastage and maximizing plant growth. In precision irrigation, what is really at the essence, it's uh, delivering to the root zone of the plant the amount of water and the amount of nutrients which is needed. So we, this, we regard our system like a delivery possibility. So the water and the nutrients like uh, fertilizer or crop protection is flowing through the pipe and via small holes where we install a dripper the water is getting the amount of water and the amount of nutrition it really needs. So this has a very big benefit. First of all we use much less water. In some of the examples uh, depending on the crop of course we can really increase the yield up by 50 percent compared to tra traditional methodologies. And also because it's a low pressure solution, we use much less electricity. So as again, I said before, grow more with less is our slogan. So we use less water to grow more and to have a greater output. Netofim designed a bulk water system to irrigate 5,600 hectares of arable land with the major component of the infrastructure being a 20 kilometer concrete canal. So we are looking here at a reservoir holding 130,000 liters of uh, water. This reservoir has two purposes. First of all, it's a storage uh, facility where we are holding the water which will be pumped through the canal. And secondly, it's also used as a sedimentation pit. So the water is coming from the Akagera River. We can see the pump house uh, down there. We're pumping the water out of the river and into the reservoir. And in order to ensure that the water has the best quality, we uh, let it uh, sediment here and all the particles are collected at the bottom of the reservoir. The Gabiro Agribusiness Hub is expected to enhance private sector investments in Rwanda's agriculture sector. This project is, is, is enhancing the private sector investment in, a, in, a, in agriculture, I guess, in, in three ways. Uh, first of all, we are de-risking the sector in a sense that we are really kind of uh, 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 providing irrigation, which allows farmers to cultivate year-round and therefore curbing the issue, eliminating the issue of seasonality. Uh, second, we are, we are providing technologies, as, 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 as I said, so when you cannot uh, 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 build, I mean, cultivate on two to three hundred hectares, a block of hectares using a hoe. So you have to deploy machinery, for example. You, the, the commodities we chose are, 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 are going to use the improved varieties. And so everything really uh, is, is, is showing the, 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 the risking of the sector. By establishing a project like this, the government is really boosting local production and also inviting foreign investors for, to produce crops for export. Um, this is also is mainly addressing food security issues by Rwanda, but this also helps to put Rwanda you know, as a destination of choice for commercial farmers. The project will significantly benefit and improve the livelihood of the surrounding community. 
uh, those we call the, the, the directly impacted, the direct impacted uh, uh, communities are uh, benefiting, I think, in, in three ways. Number one, as a country, uh, government of Rwanda being a people-centered government, when we, we, we uh, compensated the land to the people, we, we gave them some resettlement houses. So we don't expropriate people for them to, to, be, to be homeless and landless. So we, we built three community resettlement nearby where they used to be. And then we gave them also a community block which will be equally irrigated like the commercial block. And the rest of the, the block, the, the blocks I talked about, the investors are going to, to, to use, they are actually leasing the land to the, to, 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 to the landowners. So landowners are going to also be getting yearly land fee, which is commensurate actually. So they are going to be leasing their lands uh, by the, 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 the investors. They have got uh, some decent housing, and uh, 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 thirdly, the community uh, irrigated block where they're going to build to 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 to, to cultivate their 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 food crops is also equally irrigated. But also, there's an opportunity for those communities to be outgrowers of the investors. Uh, so there is also there a business opportunity. Uh, and lastly, but not really least. Quite a number of them are going to get jobs within the commercial blocks. With the impact of climate change being felt throughout the continent, studies have shown that the adoption of precision irrigation has helped reduce the carbon footprint of farming. And by using climate smart irrigation solutions, we can first of all reduce uh, emission of uh, greenhouse gases, but we can also avoid soil erosion, salination, and other uh, problems faced in agriculture. So drip irrigation has a very active role and can play a very active contributor to saving, uh, to reducing emissions. According to Rwanda's irrigation master plan, the government is pursuing more potential irrigation investment opportunities. The irrigation master plan uh, indicates that we, as a country, we have 600,000 uh, irrigable land. Out of that, the, uh, the NST1 and PSTF4 are actually targeting 102 hectares to be irrigated by 2024. But by the look at things, we are currently standing at 70 hectares being irrigated right now. And you can appreciate that almost 80% uh, 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 of the land is yet to be irrigated. And so, uh, Rwanda being ranked as a country that is uh, well known in doing business, we are looking for potential investors in actually helping us out, uh, setting up similar structures uh, in terms of really sustainable, integrated and complex uh, 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 irrigation, so that by 2050 we finish irrigating our 600,000 hectares uh, 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 of arable land. The Rwandan government aims to modernize and professionalize the agriculture sector, thus moving from subsistence farming and integrating smallholder farmers into profitable commercial commodity chains. By adopting precision agriculture, the sector's sustainability and profitability is certain while protecting the environment. Well, that's it for this episode of Doing Business in Rwanda. Thank you for watching. Share your feedback on Twitter. Our handle is at TNBC Africa. I'm Tessie Carvin. Bye for now.